this week's 10 minute technique, we're gonna learn how to use the rope to teach us how to roll out of the way of punches. So first off, um, I'm wrapping my hand. I'm gonna quickly wrap my hand the way I did in this week's quick tip. Just a quick wrap in case you wanna review. So learning how to roll, what is rolling? Rolling is a defensive technique to help you evade wild punches or hooking or overhand punches. Now, with defense, there is ducking, which is kind of obvious, and drop straight down. There's slipping, there's rolling, there's foot movement, there's blocking. Today we're focusing on rolling. So I want you to visualize or think about a person throwing wild circular punches at you. Whether it's a perfect left hook or wild hook, you're gonna roll underneath it. Rolling refers to dropping your height, making a U shape with the point of not just making the person miss, but make them pay for trying to hit you. Meaning, I make them miss, and when I come out of the roll, I'm gonna strike. Never just make a person miss. You wanna make them pay for trying to hit you. I'm gonna quickly wrap my hand. Now, this rope, you've probably seen in every iconic boxing movie. Everyone has clips of using the rope as a drill to learn head movement and rolling. There's always iconic clips of the speed bag, heavy bag work. So today we're focusing on the rope and usually, usually in those iconic clips, I don't like what they're showing. Now I know it's a movie, I know it's not real life, but believe it or not, a lot of people learn how to fight from watching movies. Well, they learn how to fight incorrectly from watching movies. Um, most people throw wild punches, mostly because wild punches look better on film. Whether you grew up watching Sylvester Stallone or Vin Diesel or Jason Statham, it's wild hooking punches that people tend to throw in street fights. And you'll see those once in a while in professional fights if it's timed perfectly. But normally punching is more compact. So whether the person you're fighting is throwing a very clean left hook or wild hook, this rope will teach you how to evade the punch. This drill is, is to be done before you begin trying to apply it in sparring. This is um, pretty much one step above shadow boxing, where shadow boxing may be in the ring or in front of a mirror. The rope, this guide, represents a series of wild punches. So when I'm on this rope, I don't see the rope. What do I see? I see a person in front of me, and I see a wild punch coming. Now, in my perspective, I'm on the right side of this rope. That would mean I'm visualizing a punch coming to the left side of my head. When that punch comes, I drop my height. I'm dropping straight down. And then I'm gonna roll my head to my left. Now, I can roll two ways. My feet can be stationary. I can roll and come back, or I can step. I drop, I step, and I come up onto the opposite side of the rope. That gives me a sharper angle. You're gonna practice both. On the rope, I'm gonna roll to the right and roll to the left, stationary. Meaning my feet are not moving. I keep my chin down. I drop my height just enough so that the punch misses me. I don't drop too low. Dropping too low is unnecessary. It takes too long to come up. And if it's a street fight or MMA fight, I can run into a knee. If you watch any YouTube highlight clips and you see fighters like Canel Whitaker or Mike Tyson who roll very low once in a while, those guys are tremendous athletes that have impeccable timing. Generally, most fighters don't roll too low. And even Mike Tyson, generally, didn't roll too low, he rolled just enough to make his opponent miss and make him pay. So if you see a clip and go, oh, he rolled really low that time. Once in a while, crazy athletes can do crazy things, but generally speaking, I rolled just enough to make the punch miss so I can come up and counter punch. Now, just to warm up, you can practice a few times, just going back and forth, making that U shape. But the real drill here for the rope is to make our opponent miss and close distance slightly with a step and come up punching. So I'm gonna do this a few times just so you see where this is going.
that I'm gonna explain exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing these specific punches in this specific order. So I'm gonna roll going forward. I can roll going back as well. Going back is a little trickier, a little more advanced. In general, we don't want to back up when we're fighting, but there are times we have no choice. We are forced backwards, or we're backing up intentionally to draw our opponent in, to try to counter punch them with other techniques. So let me break this down. My hands are up. The punch now comes to the right side of my head. I drop my height, I step with my rear foot, and my leaf foot comes up a few inches. Once I complete the roll, I'm gonna fire my counter punches. The next punch comes. It's coming to the left side of my head. I drop my height. I step a few inches with the left leg. The right leg comes up the same amount that my left leg moved. If I move my left leg five inches, the right foot comes up five inches. That's so my stance doesn't inadvertently begin to spread too far apart or get too narrow. I always wanna feel solid in my stance. Once I come out of the roll, I begin punching immediately. When my opponent goes to hit me, if I make them miss out of counter punch, they're probably just gonna to try to punch me again. So it's always make a miss, make them pay. When I drop to the right and come up to the right, I start punching with my right hand. That's because most of my weight has transferred to my right hip during the roll. You know, I shouldn't say most of my weight, more of my weight has transferred to my right hip. Because my weight is in my right hip, it's loaded up with power. I fire off my right side and I finish with my left side. When I drop to my left, the weight has not transferred slightly to my left hip, just a slight transfer. I fire off that hip. As I'm firing, I'm transferring the weight back to the right hip. The weight's in the right hip, I fire off the right hip. Now, this is a lot to memorize. A lot to memorize if you broke down this video in slow motion. However, I don't want you to memorize it. Hear what I say and then feel it. If you feel it, it'll work out better for you. I'm gonna back up and run down this rope one more time. The punch is coming to the right side of my head. I'm gonna drop my height, step with the right foot, the left foot comes up, the same distance I move the right foot, and I counter off the right side. Boom, boom. The next punch comes to the left. I drop my height, I make the punch miss, and I counter punch. When I go to the right, I counter punch with the right hand first. When I go to the left, I counter with the left first. I continue the flow. Now, all I'm doing is programming my body. I'm not memorizing this. I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to feel it. Whether I'm stepping forward or stepping back slightly. And by the way, these are small steps. I inch my way forward or I inch my way back. They're not big steps. And they're not big steps because the person I'm fighting and they're also trying to dictate the distance. Generally, if a person's attacking me, that means they're probably closing distance. When that left hook comes at me, or actually left hook comes this way, when that overhand right comes at me, because they're moving forward, I can't move forward that much. It's just enough where I get slightly inside the maximum velocity of their punch and I counter with shorter punches. Let's break that down. The maximum velocity of the punch, meaning the person trying to hit me, they're aiming where my head is. They're trying to get maximum velocity on their fist where my head is. If I come inside slightly, their punch hasn't reached maximum velocity. This way, if I mistime it, or they glance off me, or hit me indirectly, I don't take maximum power. That's why I'm coming in slightly when I roll. Let's watch again. Now visualize, pretend the rope isn't here. These are a series of wild punches. 
The person's punching at me. I'm dropping, I'm coming in, punch, 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 drop. I come in and I counter. I come in and I counter. And I'm gonna repeat this over and over as a beginning level martial artist. Whether you are a boxer, a kickboxer, mixed martial artist, just an enthusiast, I want you to pick just a few punches to focus on. Right now, I'm using only my left hook and my straight right. As you get more advanced and more comfortable, then of course, you can mix things up and use a lot of different counter punches. You could even break all the rules I set for you just now if you're making a miss, I'm making them pay. But in the beginning, if you step to the left, start with the left. If you step to the right, start with the right. As you get more advanced, you'll move forward, you'll move back, you'll mix things up, but you'll be in the habit of making your opponent miss and making them pay for trying to miss you. And that is this week's 10 minute technique. Thank you.